have your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is it possible for them to get my stand? If supposed to get my if they can't, it's okay. Well, we're gonna have a bit of a different kind of service today. That's why you can see I have people sitting down with me on the stage. Yeah. But before we get into the service, just a couple of announcements, four announcements. I wanted to watch a, just a 30-second clips of what Spontaneous Worship was last week. And Spontaneous Worship is um, it's an online worship that we run. We just run it for one hour. But it's designed in such a way that if you want to worship or pray by yourself, you can take this video, go back and watch it on YouTube and, you know, just really be blessed. So I'm wanting to watch this for 30 seconds. We can't hear nothing. My heart will manifest themselves. No longer shall people ask you where is your God. No longer shall people ask you where is your God. Because your God that walks behind the scene will show up. He will rise up strong. He will show up. He will rise up strong. For everyone that has a health challenge, your God will rise up strong. For everyone that has a delay, Jehovah will rise up strong. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He said, the hand of the Lord is not to shut to shame. He said, lift up your heads or you can Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so worship is curated. I mean, there are loads of worship videos we've, we've put on YouTube, on YouTube for you. You can watch it, share with your friends. Sometimes you just need someone to, to just give you that nudge of how to pray and worship. Sometimes you don't feel like praying. You can go there at this time. You want to worship, just play it. Glory to God. Three more announcements. Um, our Christmas carol production, it's, we can't call it a Christmas service, you know, it's not a justice. It's a total production. This is the biggest Christmas production we're having. It's a combination of music, dance, drama. It's big. It's taking place next Sunday. And you can see, can you show the flyers that has the artists? Maybe this will not capture everything for us. You know, there's a flyer that has, we have, um, you know, we have... Um, Daniel Etim F. Young, we have people in the choir, Dorothy, um, who? Spyro, um, Sharon Oja, B. Sola, they are all, it's a full production. But because we anticipate we're going to have more than enough people, we're doing two shows. So next Sunday, two announcements. Number one, there will only be three services. So I'm going to really announce that. So all of you that do four services, you're going to bump up a little because we're going to have two shows in the evening. And you have to pre-register. Because if you want to invite maybe your boss or something, you have to get like a VIP ticket. It will be packed. So I'm saying ahead. I'm saying ahead of time because it's only here we are hosting it and all the campuses are attending the Christmas carol. So there's no way we're going to be able to do that. Glory to God. If you can help me get the flag before the next service, that would be good. And the last two announcements is that Wine Press is taking, it, is taking place at Wine Press, um, at TBS, the Tafa Balewa Square. <laughs> yes, Wine Press is taking place at Tafa Balewa Square. Um, we're believing in this wine press we're going to have somewhat close to 20,000 people every single night in a physical space. Glory to God. So let me say what this does to us as a church. What this does to us as a church is this. Um, we need, if you're going to host 20,000 people, you need about 7,000 people to serve. There's going to be a lot of cars, a lot of people. So I'm saying so because all of us, it's not like um, I'm not in the ushering department. Everyone in this church 
is going to serve for wine press. So I'm, you know, so I'm saying it because all of the district pastors, all of you that attend churches, you're going to just be met with somebody. Why are you going to serve? They're going to register you. All everybody, it's not solely that all cell members are going to serve. You know, so I'm saying that so that, and all of you that have, you know, department that don't work on Sundays, everybody's serving. Every men's group, women's group, students' group, children's group, everybody's serving. So I just wanted to be, because that's the only way we can cater. We don't want to invite the whole world. We have maybe about 500 people that are coming from outside the country and outside Lagos. We don't want to invite the whole world and we're not ready for them. Praise the Lord. So let me look at him and say, everyone is going to serve. Both the young and the old. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everyone is going to serve, both the young and the old. So please take note of that. Um, the serving campaign starts today. So Pastor Bolaji John, the serving campaign starts today. From today, we want to be able to get everyone to serve. You know, we're, we're, we're doing a mass choir of 1,000 people. Praise the Lord. So if you've never sang with the choir before, this is your opportunity. You can join the mass choir. We're having a mass choir every night. 1,000 voices unto the heavens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen and amen. Um, and the last, so it's going to be at TBS on the 24th to 26th. And um, the last announcement is this. Um, our end of the year service, our end of the year service is taking place here. Because of the kind of numbers we've seen this year, everybody is already kind of weary. I'm like, how will we hold? How are we going to carry people? So we're going to use multiple venues. So we're using this place. We're using, you know, the car park as overflow. We're using the Westfield, right? We're using the first field as overflow. We're using Coliseum as overflow. But also, our headquarter church, we're going to use as an overflow. So all of you that are coming from very far, you can just move close to Ologolo, and it's going to sit about 4,000 people in the overflow. So we're trying to make room so that we can be able to provide room for maybe between 10 to 15,000 people thereabout physically. Then others are going to join online. And it's going to be really powerful. It's going to be powerful because we're going to stop medic service. Um, we're going to stop medic service around... And we're going to turn NLP service around 11.45 and move into NLP moment. We call it NLP life moment, where we will, for the next 15 minutes, pray together, pray and worship together into 2024. It's something you don't want to miss. It's going to be very powerful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God today? I say, are you ready for the word of God today? Yes. All right. Mount Moron said that anywhere purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable. Anywhere purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable. So, once you don't know the purpose of a thing and you do it, the tendency is that, number one, you will be inconsistent. Number two, you will abuse it. Number three, you will not derive the full benefit of what you're doing. So, anywhere purpose is unknown, abuse is what is inevitable. And the reason I'm saying this is because sometimes when you hear people complain about their job, you would really ask them, excuse me, when we're going to get this job, what did you think you were signing up for? And it just really occurs that they didn't know they were signing up for. The same thing with sometimes it's marriage. The very thing people complain about in marriage is the very reason why you should be in marriage. So someone says in marriage, can you, you know, can you believe it? You know, my spouse, you know, my spouse wants us to, sh you know, um, my, maybe the man is saying something like, you know, I have to pay this, I have to pay this, I have to pay this. I said, excuse me, why did you get married? It's one of the beauty, the blessings and burdens of marriage. So every time purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable. And the reason I really linger on this is that today... I'm going to teach about something we do, but most of us do not understand why we do it. So we are not able to derive full benefit of why we do it. So today I'm going to talk about the power of praise and worship, the power of praise and worship. And just to let you know, today's a very practical class. I will need one more seat. I don't like the way they are clustered here. You know, thank you for showing that you don't, thank you, the guys at the back. I just want the live feed. Thank you. You know, yeah, I, I I wouldn't want more sit for them. I think they are really clustered together, you know. So the power of praise and worship, and today's a practical service. The reason why is that as I'm teaching the power of praise and worship, what we'll be doing, we'll all be praising and worshiping together. There's no point of teaching on prayer where you don't get to pray. 
There's no point of teaching on praise and worship where you are not given the opportunity to praise and worship the Lord. Because sometimes we've reduced praise and worship to what we're doing on annual Thanksgiving, but it has to be a lifestyle. So I will give you the story that helped me. And this is something that was a year in my life I felt as if I hadn't made, I just felt that the year was slow. And some goals I'd set hadn't happened. And, you know, and I was getting frustrated because something similar happened the other year. But I was like, this is not the kind of thing I wanted. There's a way I measure my, myself. So I was thinking, what should I do? And it occurred to me that because things had not gone the way I wanted, I was sinking into a depression, I was down. So I took some time to pray. And when I prayed, one of the things that I came back with was this. Just spend time in praising and worshiping me. I remember that that year, where that was the year that our Thanksgiving service as a church went to another level. That was the year it started. I just came back and I said, there's a lot to thank God for. And everybody like, hmm, a lot to go. And I just began to sing and praise. And the next day after that, the explosion just started. If you're going to follow Christ, you must learn how to thank God when you see nothing. I'm telling you. And the biggest and faithful praise and thanksgiving comes when you can't see anything. So let's go into the Bible. Psalm 150 verse 1 verse 2 and verse 6. They will show the King James. I will read some other translation. Psalm 150 verse 1 verse 2 and verse 6. Glory to God. Psalm 150 verse 1 verse 2 and verse 6. The Bible says this, praise the Lord. Praise God in a sanctuary. Praise God in the heavens of his power. Verse 2. He says this, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the what? Oh, okay, they're giving the amplified version. Why not just give the King James first? I, I don't know why you're giving the amplified version. Okay, thank you. So let's start from verse 1 because I noticed it was a bit different. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Verse 2, he says this. Praise him for his mighty act. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let's jump to verse 6. Verse 6 now. He says, let everything that has bread praise ye the Lord. Everything that has bread praises God. When you see the leaves wave this way, they're praising God. When you see the dogs wag his tail, it's praising God. Because everything that has breath was designed with the capacity to praise God. He says, let everything that has breath praise God. The only persons that refuse to praise God are human beings. It's human beings that want to arrogate their result to themselves. It's human beings that are thoughtless that God did it. You know what the Bible says in the book of Matthew? It says, remember that God gives puts the rain both on the just and the unjust you know what that means even for the person that doesn't know god is prosperity god has hand in it they say oh that guy's a muslim god says i'm the one that gives rain both to the just and to the unjust glory to god and so why don't people praise god one of the reasons why people don't praise god is this number one a lot of people are, are, are not thoughtful about praising god it doesn't it doesn't just occur to them it doesn't just occur to them it, it doesn't occur to them and some people say things like what god did is very small listen to me there's nothing that god does that is small the bible says it is the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight once it is god's doing it always marvels us why if you take god for granted you become grounded if you take god for granted you become grounded a lot of people have lost everything because they took god for granted it's amazing so you wake up in the morning it doesn't even occur to you that that waking up in the morning is the grace of god do you know some people cannot walk distance without resting they can't go one kilometer they have to rest you don't even think that every day you walk up and down it's the grace of god you are in church right now you're not in a hospital do you know that's the grace of god 
He says, let everything that has prayed praise the Lord. Sometimes people don't praise God because we, we, we you know, we, 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 we don't think enough. You have kids. It's the grace of God. Look at your son. Look at your daughter. Some people's children, they are financial projects. Some people's kids are financial projects. I met a couple one time and they said, he said, just to let you know, Pastor, how serious this case is. Since the child had been born two years ago, we spent over a hundred hundred thousand dollars to keep him alive. He said everything we want to do financially had to come to a standstill because our goal was to keep our child alive. Someone says, I'm not married, but you're alive. It's the grace of God. He says, let everything that has bread. So why don't people praise God? Number one, because they feel as if, they feel as if, they, they're not thoughtful of it. They've not, they've not taken time to think that God is actually in this thing. They've not taken time to slow down and say, God is actually in this. This is the work of the Lord. So some people are not thoughtful. So the thing is this, I want you to be mindful of the goodness of God. One of the words that should come out of your mouth very often is thank you, Jesus. Jesus. One of the words that should come out of your mouth is God is good and kind to me. Look at where you are. Question, you know, one time, we're talk, I met with people that went to um, high school together. We're not talking about our friends. Then someone asks about someone and someone says, ah, nobody knows where he is. Then one of my one of my classmates said something that made me laugh, made all of us laugh. It's a serious one, made us all laugh. He said this. He said, anybody that is not doing well, nobody knows where he is. And I kind of recycled all of a sudden. He said, everybody that is doing well, everybody knows where they are. Glory to God. Anybody that's doing well, nobody knows where he is. Glory to God. So, so God expects us to praise him. God expects us to praise him. God expects us to thank him. God expects us to live a life of praises and thanksgiving to him. So, sir, you must learn some time just to praise God. Just to praise God. Ha, ha, just to praise God. So, question, what are the benefits of praising the Lord? What are the benefits of what? Praising the Lord. You know, it's amazing. The other day I was watching Spiro's video and some people just felt that he was outrageous because when he won the, one of the awards, he went on his knees and said, thank you, Jesus. And someone said, that's outrageous. We already know that. I said, where is a better place than to thank God? Than publicly in front of people and let people know that this is not my effort. This is the work of the Lord. You want to thank him privately for what he did publicly? Now you wise pass. I'm telling you, you, you want to thank him. You want to thank him privately for what he did publicly. You keep asking for public testimonies, yet you want to thank him privately. I want to ask you, when last did you even slow down and say, Lord, Thank you for the kind of husband you gave me. Because the kind of husband you have or the kind of wife you have is some person's prayer point. Look at how tough the economy is. You were buying petrol, 25,000 or maybe 20,000 to fill your tank. Now you are buying the same petrol to fill your tank. 80,000 naira and yet you are not begging. It seemed to me as if, as inflation increases, God has a way of making the blessing on your life to increase. So that the inflation does not catch you. All of you that have kids here, how have you dealt with increase in school fees? When it was the old price, you thought it was very high. Now they've increased the school fees. Is it not you that is paying? The principal, the proprietor has now knocked on your door and said, Mrs. Thomas, how far with school fees? The same way you used to pay before. That's the same way you are paying right now. Have you not seen young people that have blood pressure? Young people that have cancer? But you, throughout this year, even Panadol, you didn't use. Look at the faithfulness, the goodness, and the kindness of God. We must learn to praise Him. So, and let me say this as uh, here. A lot of things we think we take for granted are things that 
let me, oh, I'm going to say some other way. A lot of things you think are normal are big testimonies and miracles for people. What should I start with? Is it health? You will never value what health is until you see someone in intensive care units. Just go to the hospital nearby. You will see people that are grateful for health. Is it that there's a woman or there's a man in your life that makes you happy? You will never value it until you see someone that's gone through a heartbreaking divorce that has torn them apart, destroyed everything. Then you will look at what you have and say, Father, thank you. Is it a supporting family? You will never know what it is when, until you see siblings that cannot see each other face to face. That if they see each other, it's thunder and it's war. Is it the fact that God answered your prayers? He says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So, and let me say this, that this is not very touching. One of the reasons why God asks you, everything God asks you to do, he always has you in mind. That's the truth. If God asks you to pray, it's you he has. You must remember this all the time. If God asks you to pray, he has you in mind. Because there's nothing you can do to him that can add to him. So whatever I ask you to do is you he has in mind. You know, sometimes I have kids. Sometimes when I, my kids, you know, just over the night, I have a very strict, I, I, have, I tell them things like, if you need to play games, this is the allotted time for games per day. You can overshoot it because you need to read this amount of time. I cannot divide the time for them. And, um, you know, sometimes they know I'm coming and they have overshot their time. They run, they go and sleep. And I laugh. I said, it's only in the future that they will realize that all I'm doing and all these habits I'm giving them is for them. It takes spiritual maturity to come to a place to realize that all that God is asking you, praise me, pray, give, it is actually for you. And you know what I'm saying so? The reason why is that you've complained long, long enough, take responsibility for your changes. The complaining and depression you always brag about and depressed, things are not working out. You need to take responsibility. What's take responsibility? Ask yourself, do I want to continue this way? What do I need to do to encounter a change? You can sit down in church tomorrow until you take responsibility for changes, you will never see a change. And that's why praise is very powerful because it's one of the avenues you're dancing the change you want. You can write notes to tomorrow. It's what you do that matters, not what you write. Praise God. I said, praise God. Someone, so let's read. The first thing praise does is this. So the power of praise and worship. The first thing praise does. Praise lifts you. Wow. Praise lifts you. You can, you can personally say, praise lifts me. That's great. Let me show you some scripture quickly. Psalm 42, verse 5 and 6. 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 See what it says. He says, the psalmist says, Why art thou cast thou, O my soul? Why are you so disquieted? He says, What's going on? Why are you falling into depression? He says, hope thou in God. Then he tells you what he will do. He says, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. He says, why, why do you think about this year and you're breaking down? Why are you thinking about family and you're breaking down? Why are you thinking about marriage and you're breaking down? I understand. Listen to me. Listen to me. I understand that there was some setback. I understand there were some losses. I understand that your mother-in-law made the marriage terrible for you. It says, but oh, this is my response. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Verse 6, verse 6, verse 6, verse 6. The next verse, please. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. I asked for the next verse. You can go the next way. Okay, I'll just go ahead and read. Glory to God. He says this, Oh my God, this verse 6, My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember thee from the land of Jordan and Hemorite and from the heel of the Lord. Let me read to you the Passion Translation, just the same chapter, the Passion Translation. Hallelujah. This is very powerful to me. Psalm 42 verse 5. 
hallelujah psalm 42 verse 5 he says so then my soul why will you be depressed why will you sink into despair just keep hoping and waiting for the lord he says your savior for no matter what i will still sing praises for for the living before his face before his face i'll read, I'll read that again he says why will you sink into despair just keep hoping and waiting on the lord your savior for no matter what i will sing with praise for living before his face is my saving grace I, I wish they could show you that scripture it says for living before his face is my saving grace let me tell you what happens that's it look look at what it says he says it says the passion translation verse 6 verse 6 verse 6 verse 5 rather not verse 6 but in verse 5 verse 5 just go back one. he says so then my soul why will you be depressed why will you sink into, into despair just keep hoping someone says i'm depressed what should you do can i tell you if you're depressed if you can take time to open your mouth and sing you will come out of depression i understand that you lost some money i understand that some goals did not happen you're very worried about when you will get married you're very worried about how the funding will come and you're sinking into depression what praise does that praise has lifting power it will literally take you out of a place of depression see what it says he says what i will do is this i will still sing my praises for the, i will still sing my praises for living before his face is my what is my saving grace you see it's my saving grace let me tell you something anytime i see someone that comes to me and complains um my finance is not going so well I have challenges with my neighbor i have chat and list all the complaints one of the questions you should ask them is this when last did you praise god they will tell you that they've not really spent time to praise god in a long time every time you come to church and watch this now this you understand this every time you come to church and you feel that like oh, church did not touch me today i can definitely bet something during the praise and worship you did not talk we're looking all through because there's something praise and worship does to you personally someone says well i don't have a nice voice but that's the voice gave you to worship him worship him with it praise god how do you praise god you need to learn to praise god wholeheartedly and and when i say wholeheartedly you must know something we don't praise god because we feel like it actions oh wow feelings follow actions what does that mean when i choose to start praising god i will start feeling like it you must remember something how do i get to praise god when i don't feel like it you must remember this feelings follow action the moment i choose to start praising god i will what feel like it so why do we praise god because praising god lifts us lifts us praises releases lifting power you can't be praiseful and be depressed at the same time you can be what praiseful and what be depressed at the same time so if you choose to be full of praise there will be no place for depression the second thing the third thing is this if you are depressed praise him does that not occur to you why paul and silas when they got into prison when they got into prison i could imagine people asking them oh wow <laughs> you guys are serving god at least me i came here for stealing me i came here for mother why did you come here for preaching where is your god is your god dead and you know and all those people were talking bad things to them oh i thought you do nlp prayers oh i thought you go to harvesters oh i thought this i thought that i thought this and instead of listening to all those things you know what they did they said praising god hosanna in the highest as they praise god why as they praise god the the opportunity for depression could not stay praise carry them out of it this morning we're going to you know <laughs> we're going to praise has lifting power there's a song we're going to sing together hallelujah there's a song we're going to sing together you know and we're going to sing many songs just to let you know hallelujah yeah there's a song we're going to sing together i'm just trying to i want to read the word into you this song is this this song is this the title of the song is you are my all in all the chorus says jesus lamp of god worthy is your name jesus lamp of god worthy is your name then the verse one of the verse says this you are my strength when i was weak you are the treasure can you put this okay thank you you are the treasure i see i love it. it says you are my strength when i was weak you are the treasure i seek 
you are my all in all seeking you as a precious jewel lord to give you i will be a tool you are my all in all another song we're going to sing just right now is this which is very powerful another song we're going to sing right now is this which is very powerful thank you jesus it's a very popular song we sing here dependable god dependable god reliable reliable god unchangeable unchangeable god just imagine if you're going through a tough time and you just begin to sing dependable dependable god so the deadline for the funding is just two weeks away and your mind is racing everywhere you're going into the theater for a surgery the nine months of pregnancy is coming to an end and they said this your dd you're going into the meeting and as fear fills your mind because Satan wants to show you all those pictures all those terrible pictures you just go dependable dependable god it doesn't continue please we have started i'm seeing some of you here not talking praise has to be altered someone says i don't know the song read the words read the, everyone here today is going to say something if you don't say something i'm going to ask the ushers to come and tap you and say excuse me sir say something if you don't listen to me if you don't know the song read the words put the words there just say dependable dependable god because sometimes praise is not a song it's what you say the reason why this is a very practical teaching but this is what i want to say to you no matter if you're reading or singing can you sing it from here not from here i wanted to connect deep down and let memories flood your mind as you're singing all of you at home you know i know you're at home but you can't do this in the kitchen you have to pause whatever you're doing for the next few minutes and let's just praise him so if you're in the bed you have to sit up on the bed if you're watching you have to get a place and let's do this together hallelujah Let's go again. Dependable God. Dependable God. Dependable. Dependable God. Lord, we're thanking you because you are dependable. We're thanking you because you are reliable. In the midst of all the deadlines, all the bad news, all the things we understand and we don't understand, Lord, we're thanking you because you are reliable. You are dependable. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please sit down. How do you feel just now? Do you feel lifted all of a sudden? But the reason why you chose to be lifted is because you chose to praise him. No wonder Paul and Silas did that. The second reason why we praise him is this. When we praise him, praise helps us sense his presence. Praise helps us sense his presence. Write in your notes, when I praise God, it helps me sense his presence. Psalm 22 verse 3. 
Sometimes, I don't know what happens to you, but sometimes you can get afraid. Sometimes you can feel as if, where is God? Sometimes you're wondering, does God notice me? And you're wondering, why does God seem so far? We know that he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, we're not saying praise brings God's presence. No, sir. We have God's presence. But in those moments, praise has a way of what? Helping us to sense his presence. See what the Bible says, Psalm 22 verse 3. He says, but thou art holy and thou inhabits the praises of your people. You know, one version says that praises makes you feel close to me. Maybe, maybe you've gone through a tough year and you feel as if God has deserted me. Maybe you've gone through a heartbreak, you feel as if things are over. Maybe you were here and you were really mistreated by your husband, you were mistreated by your wife. And terrible words were said to you and you just wondered god what is going on this is not what i prayed for this is not what i signed for and you feel the pain in your soul and you feel so alone in this world i, I don't know what happened some of you you know what the feeling maybe you've lost a dad lost a brother lost a child lost someone close to you and you really feel alone in this world you know you just wonder does anyone care about me is anyone there for me can i really say god is there for me because all my experiences does not reflect as if God is there and you're just saying God show me a sign show me a sign that you really care for me show me a sign that I really matter show me a sign that I'm not alone in this world things seem so tough and you're asking God where is the sign where is the proof that you're close to me more than the fact that you pray at that moment praise helps you sense God's presence praise one of the things that happen when we praise God is this his presence that is in us becomes all over us. His presence, and that presence is so powerful. The presence of God gives us assurance. You just say, I'm not alone. And that's why have you noticed when you really have the moment of prayer, you come out stronger. Why? Because God's presence has a way of filling you with assurance. You know the thing? I know that you really want to get married. But one thing praise will do is to leave that place of praise. that. I've not seen my husband, but I know it is settled. That is the assurance. You know, you're looking for this money for your business and it's not come. It's knowing that I've not left that, but this is settled. That is the assurance. Because praise really gives you assurance. Let me read some scripture to you. I've read one to you. Psalm, Psalm 22 verse 3. I wanted to read um, um, Psalm 75 verse 1 in the NLT translation. Psalm 75 verse 1. Psalm 25 verse 1. And the next song we're going to sing is this. You are my dwelling place and Yahweh support. Yeah. See what it says. It says, we thank thee, O God. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. I want to say something here. Are you in a place where you're like, I'm not sure what the future will hold. I'm really scared. I'm, I'm, I'm really scared. I, you know, I, I'm entering to this phase of my life and I don't know what is going to happen in terms of business. I don't know what next year will be like. I, I don't know what it's going to be like in my relationship. I don't know what is going to happen to my kids. What you need at that time is, is divine presence to fill your heart with divine assurance. And someone says, how can I get that? One of the ways you get that is what? By spending time praising and worshiping him. Glory to God. You are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. Mm. You always fill my heart with songs oh, Sing along, sing along. If you don't sing along, just read the word in. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Oh Lord, let the weak say.
the song says you are my hiding place you are my hiding place I have a place I can go to I, I, I remember when I was young I was in the boarding school and sometimes I would get in trouble with a senior that wants to beat me up but the head boy in my school or the senior prophet was my school father and when this head is it is coming to get me I run into my school father and in that place nothing can touch me I, I know that things are going wrong everywhere but remind yourself you are my hiding place it says you are my hiding place and see the next line he says you always fill my heart with the songs of deliverance i want to ask you what is going on with you right now he fills your heart with songs of deliverance whenever i am afraid then he says i will trust in you he said let the weak say i am strong so i don't know anybody but i am strong in the strength of the lord you enter into oil and gas and they say you're a small fry here say i know i'm a small fry but i am strong in the strength of the lord you enter real estate they say you're a small fry say i am strong in the strength of the lord why praising god helps me sense his presence doctor says this is the challenge it says i am strong in the strength of the lord Jehovah Sabos. Let me read the wordings to you. Jo Jo why are you getting ready? The song, just hold on. The Lord of hosts, reveal your glory. Yahweh Sabot. Sabot means Yahweh Sabot. The Lord of hosts. Sabot means the Lord of hosts. It's a, it's a Greek word, the Lord of hosts. So it will be, you, you can say Yahweh Sabot, but you can also Yahweh is Jehovah. It's the it's the real of saying Jehovah. Jehovah Sabot. Sabot means the Lord of hosts. Lord of hosts means the Lord that is mighty in battle. The Lord that fights. The Lord that fights. And the reason I'm singing this song is that some of you are saying that I need God to fight. Is it this is it? The Lord that fights. So yes, I'm going to read the words of the song to you. And the reason I'm reading is so that I can make some more sense to you. He says, "says The Lord of hosts reveal your glory. His glory is victory. Our God is the only one that has never lost a battle before." He says, Yahweh Sabot, Yahweh Sabot, the Lord of hosts, show your glory. Yahweh Sabot, Yahweh Sabot. Yes. Yahweh Sabot, Yahweh Sabot, Yahweh Sabot, Yahweh. Sing along, sing along, Yahweh sing along. You know, I'm, I'm going to close in the next two minutes. John chapter 4 verse 24 tells us how to worship the Lord. John chapter 4 verse 24. He says that, he says, John chapter 4 verse 24. He says, for God the Spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. What do I mean with his spirit? He says, the worship must not come from here. That's the problem. That's the problem. The worship is from here. It's from here. He said that must worship, must worship in spirit. Some of you are pressing your phones and your mind is somewhere. He says, the most in spirit. It's you must allow it, you must allow it go. You must allow it go. He says, not just worship in the spirit, worship in what? In truth. In truth means according to revelation. That's revelation. In truth means with sincerity, revelation. The third, thing, the third thing praise and worship does for me is this. Watch this now. 
Psalm 145 verse 1. Ex- oh, wow, there's so many scriptures here. Maybe Exodus chapter 15 will be better. Exodus 15 verse 2. Praise reminds me of his love and his power. You may be in a place where your partner has said hurtful things to you and says, you don't deserve my love. You, who are you? What kind of person are you? You're a useless person. Words that will really hurt and damage your self-esteem and damage you. And you're wondering, why am I here? But the powerful thing is this. Praise reminds you of God's love and his power. See what the Bible says here. This was after they left the Red, they conquered the Red Sea. He said, the Lord is my strength and my song. He's become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him an habitation. My father's God. I will exalt him. Verse 3. Keep going. He said, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Keep going. He said, Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts are they cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. Continues sir. He said, the depth have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. My God. He said, thy right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Thy right hand, O God, has dashed in pieces the enemies. My God. Verse 7. In the greatness of thy excellency, thou hast overthrown all them that rose against you. Thou sent for thy rod, which consumed them as troubles. Verse 8. He said, with the blast of your nostril, the waters gathered together. The floods took upright as a heap. The depth of the sea were congealed in the heart of the sea. He said, the enemy said, I will pursue. He said, the enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. He said, my loss shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword and my hand shall destroy them. And it says, but thou did blow thy wing, thy sea covered them. They sank as they led in the mighty waters. Verse 11, who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like unto thee, O God? Amongst the gods, who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always doing wonders. Who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like unto thee, O God? Amongst the God, who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always doing wonders. Oh God. He said, Thou stretch out thy right hand, and the earth consume them. You know. I don't know how. I don't know how to read this without leaning down. I'm not saying deal and that's not the point but I'm in total awe like tears are at the back of my eyes I'm in total awe of the power of my God oh hi oh hi To think that God will go this length just to demonstrate his love. In showing his love, he demonstrates his power. Then I wonder, who am I? And that's why our last point is this. Praise reminds me of his love and of his power. You know what I'm saying so? Every time you feel as if this is too much, praise him. It will remind you of his power. Every time you feel as if I can do this, praise him. Because praise has a way of reminding us of his love and his power. We're humans. Sometimes you just get afraid. You just feel inadequate. You just feel as if I can't. But that's why we praise him. Because praise has a way of reminding us of his love and his power. We're going to sing the last song. (laughs) 
It's a very powerful song. The song is So Will I. The song says, God of, God of creation, there at the start, beginning before the, before the beginning of time, you are the one with no point of reference. You spoke to the dark and fleshed out light. You fleshed out the wand of light. He said, out of darkness you brought forth light. As you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship you, so will I. I can see your hearts in everything you have made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If, your, if creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain no syllable empty your void for once you have spoken all nature and science follow the sound of your voice the verse says this so will i so will i if the stars were made to worship so will i if the mounds bow in reverence so will i if the oceans roar your greatness so will i if everything exists to lift you eyes so will i if the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rock cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still fails shy. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy, then we will sing again a hundred billion times. God of creation. Everybody, you need to sing along and sing from there here. If you don't know the song, just read it. The beginning of time. Everyone sing. If your neighbor is not singing, let me give them a jab. If you don't know the song, read it. Oh, with no point of reference, spoke to the dark and flashed out the wonder of light. Everywhere, all of you online, everywhere in the back, everybody singing. And as you speak, yeah, a hundred people gather. I can see your heart in everything you made. Yes, Lord. Every bird is a signal of grace. If creation seeks your praise, the soul. Sing along, sing along from your heart. A heart that be a great Not sing fathers, not sing mothers, sing along. Sing along at the back, yes. Sing along. On the gallery, at the back, sing along. I can see your heart. Lift up your hands and just praise him. Just praise him. All the nursing fathers and nursing mothers, I wanted to pay attention and praise him. I know you have your kids, but this is important also. I wanted to praise him. All of you at the back, praise him. All of you online, go ahead and praise him. 
Go ahead and praise him. Father, thank you for being you. Wow. We've just come to thank you. Just to praise you for who you are, to worship you and the beauty of your holiness. Thank you for so many things. For your love, for your kindness, for your grace, for answered prayers, for your blessings. We're grateful. From a deep place in our hearts, we're grateful. We give you praise, O oh God. Accept our thanksgiving, accept our praise this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God.